Uh, thanks, everyone, and um, it's really uh, thank the organisers for the opportunity to be here today and bring a little dairy flavour uh, to this afternoon. And also, I think the bridge that both Sana and uh, Ross have been talking about, um, a communications perspective. I'm really excited uh, to be talking about our future as an industry uh, because I really believe that future looks bright. And as Ross said, this is the next step in, in terms of what does it really look like? And I'd like to give a bit of a practical um, case study to some of the things that have been talked about already today. So let's focus on a future using what we've learnt from the past and also taking hold of a future vision about being clear about where we really like to be and how is that future shaping up for us. For dairy, we're really hoping that the gods, the stars and the world markets all start aligning um, and that things are going to be better uh, in the future. We know that we've had some tough times in the past. But let's bring into focus the idea of a profitable future that places less emphasis on just how much we're producing and the word milk price, but really develops a real view of what a profitable dairy business sector looks like and how we're going to get there. And it's a future that connects our sector to the people that we feed on a daily basis. Nine out of ten Australians have dairy products in their fridge every day. And this is important from a, both a dairy perspective but also a public good perspective, because we also know that nine out of ten women in Australia don't eat enough dairy products as um, proposed by the Australian Dietary Guidelines. Now this is a huge issue um, and a frightening issue for public health because the cost alone of falls and fractures as a result of um, in insufficient dairy consumption are astronomical. <coughs> but at the end of the day, uh, our future is that of a sustainable industry. Sustainability, great word, isn't it? Hey, it's the um, most overused, most misinterpreted word of the last five years. And um, as Mick introduced me, I've worked in innovation uh, years before, and it's probably akin to the way that innovation was used in the early 2000s. Um, it's not rocket science. Um, a bit like I'm a, a dietitian by training, and a bit like preaching to people a balanced diet. It's really just common sense, and sustainability really is business common sense. But at the end of the day, a sustainable business is one that's uh, built on an agreed shared value right across your business parameters. It's a set of values that informs the way the business operates and the tone and the way that it engages with its stakeholders. It's a business that's built on the wisdom of the road that we've already trodden, but also takes into account the learning and openly seeks new innovation and continues to transform our industry through innovation. The dairy industry in Australia has really begun to consider how its future is going to be determined and has embarked on what I believe are a couple of really fundamental activities that uh, build that foundation for the future. Firstly, it's had the foresight to take a look at what a sustainable Australian industry looks like right across that value chain and gain agreement on a framework that will assist it to do a better job for farmers, for consumers and for Australia. And the great thing about this framework is it provides a fundamental understanding of our practices, our knowledge and enables a strong story to be told. In 2013, uh, the framework developed for the Australian industry described itself against these three core pillars. The first one, in enhancing livelihoods. We are an industry that makes an important contribution to the lives of many Australians, directly and indirectly, and particularly in regional communities. Our dairying businesses need to be profitable, ensuring a future for those families that farm the land. Our second pillar, improving wellbeing. What a privilege it is to work in an industry in an agricultural sector that produces this amazing product. Ten essential uh, vitamins and nutrients in milk, what a nutrient power punch. And the formats that we're able to turn this out in uh, to deliver our product to everybody um, that consumes it is really a testament to the magic that's performed by our dairy herds 
turning indigestible grass into something that's so nutritious as milk. And the third pillar, uh, reducing impact. Our farmers are custodians of the land that they raise their animals on and are serious about this responsibility. Environmental st uh, stewardship and its impact is a core business ethos to us. So sustainability can't be a gimmick. It has to be a way of doing business and therefore continually improving us and it has to be transparent and measurable. The dairy industry has laid out a number of ways that it believes it can measure its improvements and practices in a time frame to 2020 and I know that's pretty unreasonable but the idea is to show that those are really based around those three pillars we talked about before. Facts, figures, great practices are fantastic but confidence in your business born out of these factors needs to be portrayed widely. How you present yourself, your story, your credentials and yes your image needs to connect with your audiences, whether that's the consumer, the government, the media, your customers. It's as, it's as important a determining factor as anything else. And it's fair to say that agriculture has not been known for its great skill in letting people know what it does, and this has contributed to the widening of the divide between ourselves as a food producer and the people that we feed. In 2013, uh, Dairy Australia uh, facilitated a communications platform aligned with our sustainability framework and built from it. It describes our shared vision, our values and our personality because in, as an industry we have a real personality. That platform unites our communications activities and it is of course legendary. Having clarity about how we tell our story is important. Uh, through improving livelihoods, enhancing well-being and our environment, environmental stewardship. But what is really critical is that our story and the stories that we tell are consistent across all of our audiences, uh, whether it's farming communities or government or media. Being legendary is what we are, it's not just a slogan. It enables us to deliver our story with confidence, with warmth and with a real authenticity. A dent in confidence, whether it relates to our farm communities or consumers, um, belief in, in food safety and ethics, the nutrition of our food, cannot be turned around overnight by a single communication. One TV ad on Australia Day, or whatever day we might choose, will not turn things around. It takes time, it takes a consistency of message, uh, and it needs to run deeply through everything that we do. It relies on everyone taking up the opportunity to tell the story of the industry wherever they can, whether it's at the pub or it's at the local council meeting or whether it's in front of a Senate inquiry. It's built up of a sure knowledge of our business and it should be infectious. It should attract better people, better investment and better outcomes for the industry. So rather than give you an hour on um, what we've been doing and all the ways that we've been legendary in the last little while, I'm a marketer after all, I'm going to give you a short video. Um, and I'd just like this to really illustrate some of the things that the industry has been doing since August um, about taking those legendary stories out to the community. And we um, prepared to um, get ready for some more um, throughout this year.
Thank you, everybody. Um, I think perception is reality, and um, this is how we're feeling about our industry at the moment. So thank you.